help to see because the spreadsheet's going to be small. So uh, watching on your phone is going to be probably rough. I guess I can scrunch this down a little bit and make this a little wider. Maybe that'll work. I don't know. And I can make this a little bit bigger, I suppose. Okay. So a fitness center is interested in finding a 95% confidence interval for the mean number of days per week that Americans who are members of a fitness club go to the fitness center. Records of 218 members were looked at and their mean number of visits per week was 2.1. So that's our sample mean. And the standard deviation was 2.9. That's our sample standard deviation. Round answers to do decimal, excuse me, three decimal places where possible. To compute the confidence interval, we use a, okay, so we didn't get a chance to, dis, uh, the year that I'm recording this, we didn't get a chance to discuss this in class because we were building the spreadsheet. The, we, I did mention the student t-test and what the t-test was and where it came from. And the main, one of the main reasons why it was created was because they didn't have the population standard deviation so this is one of the issues that uh, he discovered when he came up with the student t-test. Otherwise, he would have been using the what we call a z-test now before it would have just been a confidence interval because there was only one type for this anyway. Because we have a sample standard deviation, or another way, another way to think of it, uh, actually probably the better way to think about it, because we do not have a population we do not have a population standard deviation. We have to resort to this t-test, which means um, we we use this upper portion of our Excel, Excel spreadsheet. We do not know the population standard deviation. So when you're reading the question, if they tell you that we know the population standard deviation, which we typically do not know, then we need to use this. Okay. If we do know the population standard deviation, we would get better results by using the Z interval. Okay, So that's going to be the answer for this question. Part B, with 95% confidence, the population mean number of visits per week is between blank and blank. So now they actually want the confidence interval. Those are boundaries we're looking for. You don't have that information. I'm saying that's what we hope the answers will be. So what we have to do is we have to take this information like we sort of did in class when we started punching in a few things just as example, but I don't think we ever finished. We didn't absolutely didn't even finish a problem, but <clears throat> we have a sample N of 218. I think that should be understandable as well. The mean is 2.1. The standard deviation is 2.9. And our confidence interval that we want is 95%. So the confidence level or confidence interval is 95%, which means our significance level is 5%. So this, what we enter here, is actually the significance level, so 0.05. Okay? This is the t-statistic. The and this is our interval. And notice that'll match up between these two numbers, 1.713 1 rounded and 2.487 rounded correctly. If many groups of the 218 randomly selected members are studied, then a different confidence interval would be produced for each group. Okay, so remember that's, uh, let's see if I can pull up the correct website. That's not it. That's me bag geeking. Uh, that's not that one. That's this one. Remember that thing. That was our discussion on Monday. Might not be Monday for you if this is not, what, 2020, fall 2023, but remember what this whole 95% thing, that's what this question is asking about. What does this 95% confidence level mean? Or what does an alpha of 0 0.05 mean, et cetera? It means that when we run, when we pull this out, we expect to get 95 of them that will contain the interval that we display. 95 out of 100 will contain the sample uh, mean. It's not a probability, though. Again, I heard someone refer to it as a probability. It's not a probability. 
Um, if many groups of 218 randomly selected members are studied, then a different confidence interval will be produced for each group, right? Here's one, there's 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 one. These are all different samples taken that gave us different confidence intervals, okay? About five, well, actually, I don't know why I didn't read it. About blank percent of these confidence intervals will contain the true population mean number of visits per week. So this one would contain the real one. This would contain the real one. The real one is not contained in here because look at that dotted line is the actual mean. The dotted line is the actual mean. I think I stated this kind of wrong on Monday. The dotted line is the actual mean. And notice how this one does not contain that mean. So it's out. This one does not contain the mean, it's out. This one does not contain the mean, it's out. If we did 100 of them, we'd expect 95 of them will actually contain the mean, and five of them, of them will not contain the mean. This one must be really close. This one's not. But I mean, like that one's obvious, there's a gap between there. And this one's telling us that so far 95.1% of them contained the mean and the other 4.9 did not of these 63,000 that it's run. Okay, so about 95% of these confidence centers will contain the true population mean number of visits per week, and about 5% will not contain the true population mean. So it's not a probability of us containing the mean, it's how many, we, how many would contain the mean, uh, I just bumped something accidentally, um, how many actually do contain the mean when we run 100 of them, okay? All right. Second question, I'm glad we're getting to this one because you need to do a little extra work for this one. <laughs> You're interested in finding a 90% confidence interval for the average commute that non-residential students have to their college. The data below show the number of commute miles for 14 randomly selected non-residential college students. Round answers to three decimal places where possible. Okay, did they give us a population standard deviation? You should say no, okay? The data, show, data below show the number of commute miles for 14 randomly selected non-residential students. So we don't, we're not actually given the sample standard deviation and all that kind of stuff. We are given actual numbers. And I'd have to scroll over to see the other the remaining values, okay? So this is why we had to take the time, in the, at least the approximately first half of the class, to build this spreadsheet. Because we want to enter these numbers in here. And that's going to kick out the population mean and the sample standard deviation. When we say population, it's this little subpopulation, but it's our sample mean, so it's fine because this is a sample. We're treating it as population, blah, blah, blah. But understand when we do the sample standard deviation, it's coming from that sample. This, I could have, it's semantics at this point, okay? Eh, sort of. All right. To compute the confidence interval, we use which. Uh, which model, a T or the Z. In this case, we do not have the, we do not have the population standard deviation, so we're still going with T, okay? Still going with what is, we almost everybody refers to it as a T test uh, or student T test. So I'm gonna enter these numbers in this column. 17, 20, 7, 9, 18, 22, 23, 17, 18, 24, 11, 13, 24. Now, you could certainly copy this down. It, it's not going to matter because we're not going to use this sampling part. We're just using the numbers in this stack to calculate the mean and the sample standard deviation. So we don't actually need this sampling thing that I added. Uh, so that's T with the 95 with 90 percent confidence. Okay, so now we got to go over to the confidence interval. We're using the T test, and we have a sample of 14. So n is 14. What is the mean? The mean we're getting from here. The mean is, and I'm going to hit com Command C or copy, and I'm going to come over here and hit Command V. No, uh, I'm going to hit Edit, Paste Special and just type in the value. Now you could alternatively record that value <clears throat> on a piece of paper or something and cop type it in there if, that, if you feel more comfortable with that. That's perfectly fine. I'm gonna do the same process with the sample standard deviation because I, I wanna capture as much accuracy as I possibly can. And edit, 
paste special values. Okay. So there's my sample standard deviation. They want a 90% 90, 90 confidence interval. So we need to change this to 0.1 because that means our alpha level will be 0.1. And I get 14.099 and 19.329 as the left and right boundaries of my interval. If many, random, if many groups of 14 randomly selected non-residential college students are surveyed, then a different confidence interval would be produced for each group. Again, we're talking about that thing. So there's 14 or, or however many, uh, a whole bunch of different ones. Each one of them is 14 students and that, those numbers having to do with what they got, okay? We would expect 90% of those intervals will can, contain the true population mean. That's like this big long one or this little short one, but notice how the mean is insert is contained within the left and right boundaries of that black line. But 10% of them will not, like this red one, or this red one, or that red one. Those do not encapsulate or enclose this dotted red line. That's what we're talking about. That's the confidence interval. Okay, the effectiveness of a blood pressure drug is being investigated. An experimenter finds that on average, the re reduction in systolic blood pressure is 21.5 for a sample size 30 and standard deviation 8.6. Estimate how much the drug will lower a typical patient's, excuse me, systolic blood pressure using a 95% confidence level. Assume the data is from a normally distributed population. Enter your answer as a trilinear inequality accurate to three decimal places. So we'll talk about that trilinear inequality. But this is the same problem we've done twice now, right? The other one, the second one, we had to in, do some pre-work to get the sample mean and the sample standard deviation. Okay, we get, uh, on average, the reduction is 21.5. And standard deviation is 8.6. And a sample size of 30. And we want 95%. So this is going back to 0 0.05. And they want this trilinear. All that means is uh, inequality is that mu is in the middle. And our left boundary is still this number. And our, our right, right boundary is still that number. So remember, this notation, when I put parentheses, and these two numbers and parentheses, that is an interval between these two numbers. The mean is right smack in the middle between those two numbers, okay? That was in the other section. If I gave you, I think, the other practice, the other practice set, um, if I gave you these two numbers and asked for what the mean is, you would take these numbers, you could find their average, that would give us the mean, or you could take the, the left value and subtract it from the right value that's the distance between those two numbers. Divide it by two, which would be the distance between the mean and one of those two numbers, and just either add it to the first number, the left number, and get the mean, or subtract it from the right number to get the mean. In this case, it's gonna be 18.289 over here, and over here we'd have 24.711. I think this is the last question, so I'm gonna do all of them for you. Merry Christmas to you. The body temperatures and degrees Fahrenheit of a sample of adults in one small town are brew, okay? Uh, assume body temperatures of adults are normally distributed. Based on this data, find the 98% confidence interval of the mean body temperatures of adults in the town. Enter your answer as an open interval. That means an, an inter using interval notation. Assume the data is from a normally distributed population. Okay, so we're gonna type in these numbers. type something in wrong you guys are while watching this yelling you type that in wrong and I don't know because I'm not looking at the numbers I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm only eyeballing this over there so I got two four five six seven eight nine ten so I got ten numbers if I delete these uh, do I ever have I don't have anywhere that I actually lay out a count do I nope so that's kind of it would have been nice if I had made a box that said count or n or something like that um, and I don't so 
Uh, we'll just set the assume that we're doing this okay. Again, we don't have to worry about this column because this stuff I'm not worried about. I'm not using or worried about. Uh, note though that because I've left these numbers here, it's it's randomly choosing one of these boxes and throwing a zero in there. If I delete these, it's not going to do that. It's never going to come up with uh, a zero. So it is working as it, as it's intended to work. Okay, so now we need to put this these two numbers, the population mean, it's really the sample mean, and the sample standard deviation into this one. So I'm going to do that copy paste thing. Copy paste special. Uh, that was the mean I just grabbed. Edit paste special. And I guess what? I don't know what that little arrow, I think that means shift. Um, because I could do it faster if I knew. But maybe showing you the keystrokes it, or the what buttons I'm clicking is better anyway. Standard deviation is that. And let's do that. There we go. Click here. Edit. Pay special. Values only. And I got that. And it all updated. And I have to put this at 10. And we want a 98% confidence interval, so that confidence le the significance level, excuse me, significance level is 0 0.02. And I should get um, 97.776 and 99.704 rounded correctly. Okay? So, uh, sorry for the delay. Yes, I intended to get this up yesterday, and I didn't. And you can yell at me if you need to, especially if you planned on getting this work done last night and you didn't, and I threw up your whole weekend, and I apologize. Certainly not my intention. Uh, how do I stop?